Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Spanish for Kiddos podcast, where you can listen to fun bilingual stories and more. My name is Barbara, and I'm the owner of Spanish Spanish for Kiddos and your host for today's show. Today, I chat with Isai Gutierrez, and he shares his book, Miguel Goes to Eagle School. And it goes to show you that no matter what size or if you're a little duck or not, you can overcome difficulties and soar to unimaginable heights. So I hope you enjoy this interview, and I hope to see you at the end of the interview. Take care, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Spanish for Kids podcast. And today I have a special guest, and Isai Gutierrez. He is going to be talking about his book, Miguel Goes to Eco School. Welcome. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing wonderful. I'm here in Houston, and today we have uh, the start of the Houston Rodeo, and so even though awesome. it's a little cold and rainy outside, it's a great day. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. So tell us a bit about your career as an author and a little bit about how, how did you get inspired by writing this book? Sure. So um, I spent the majority of my professional career as an educator, Um, and many years ago, I, I was listening to uh, an interview on the radio, and uh-huh. I heard someone uh, talking about what a great staff they had and, and how well they must have been trained. And, uh-huh. and, and so someone said, well, you must hire well or, or you must train them well. And, and the, the gentleman's response was, well, you know, you can't send a duck to Eagle School. And so... Uh-huh. Uh, When I heard that statement, it, it, uh-huh. it kind of, it bothered me quite a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it bothered yeah. me so much that, that I wrote a book about a duck that goes to Eagle School. Awesome, awesome. So it is Miguel a special type of character, right? Um, I love, I love when I, I came across your book and I go, oh my goodness, this is such a wonderful book for our bilingual learners because they go through the same kind of emotions, the same kind of obstacles. So What do you think readers would like to know about Miguel and how to overcome those obstacles? Yeah, so uh, Miguel kind of represents uh, everyone who, who, who grows up. You know, at some time or another, you don't feel comfortable with yourself and you're trying to figure out who you're meant mm-hmm. to be. Yeah. Uh, we all face bullies at one time or another. And mm-hmm. so this story is, is very specifically for that. And, and again, uh, you know, I'm a Latino. And as a Latino, yeah. you know, you're always, you know, or a person of color or, or anyone, you know, you, you're told who you can and can't be or what you can mm. and can't accomplish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, again, I wanted to make sure that that children know that that they can uh, overcome. Right. It, it, it yeah. has to do with your own desire and you can't right. go to Eagle School. You can become whoever you want to be. Uh, and you've, it, it's not easy. So parents yeah. need to know, like in, in the story. Uh, again, Miguel goes to Eagle School, but he he's afraid with every step he takes. It, mm. You know, it's a step uh, of fear, but, uh, but because he takes that step, there's also courage, right? There's yeah. no courage without fear. And so uh, so he takes those steps out of fear, but that shows the courage that it takes. So it's not easy being who you're going to be. And, and so, mm-hmm. again, this is kind of a, a self-help book for, for kids in a way, mm. right? Because... Yeah. You, where do you go uh, when you have that fear and you want to do something that you're mm-hmm. afraid to do? How do you do it anyway? And, and so I wanted to encompass all those kind of things in, in the simplest way possible. And so I hope parents will pick up this book for their kids and read it to their kids and share this idea and this right. story with their kids. I think that is such an important point because As, for instance, new bilingual learners, especially Spanish-speaking students in an English classroom or in an inclusion classroom, it, it, it can be very intimidating, right? It can be, okay, so they, they probably don't know culture-wise, and just taking that step is, is a big leap, I think, um, for a lot of bilingual learners. And I think your book brings that into such a great way that... Y- don't be afraid. You Don't be afraid of asking questions. Don't be afraid of your accent. Don't be afraid to be bilingual. You know both languages. I think it's a beautiful thing. So that brings me to my next point. So what was your vision behind the book? Um, and will Miguel be in on other adventures? Yeah, so um, 
You know, I've been asked that question. That's a great question because I'm asked that question all the time. You know, um, when I when I envisioned this this particular book, uh, I envisioned it as as just kind of this one standalone. Uh, uh-huh. so in terms of um, uh, Miguel going to Eagle School, so in, in the book there there's a character that's a bully to to Miguel, mm. and yeah. um, and uh, I, I and, and so after this is kind of this strange phenomenon. After I wrote the book. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually started asking myself questions about the book that I hadn't intended. So right. uh, in the shower, I'm like, okay, like, uh, so why, right? <laughs> why, why would Miguel be allowed to go to Eagle school in the first place? So, he, you know, <laughs> Miguel goes to speak to great mother Eagle and, and mother, great mother Eagle knows what all mm-hmm. mothers know. Right. So Miguel's right. mother sends him to talk to great mother Eagle. Cause she knows what all mothers know. And, and if you want to know what all mothers know, you have to read the <laughs> book. Right. But, right. uh, but, you know, Miguel's mother, because she, or, or great mother Eagle, because she knows what all mothers know, she tells Miguel, of course you can come to Eagle School. And mm-hmm. so afterwards, the book had been out and, and done, and I started asking myself, well, why would she, uh, why would she let Miguel come to Eagle School? And, and the answer to me was, because as a duck, the Eagles had as much to learn from Miguel as Miguel <laughs> had to learn from the Eagles. And right. so we, we, a lot of times we put ourselves in, in, in a, a position above someone or below someone or on the side of someone. And we mm. don't realize that, that we can learn as much from the people that we don't know for, yeah. uh, as we do from the people that we do know. Uh, now, in terms of, you know, uh, writing other, you know, Miguel going on other adventures, uh, yeah. I think this is it for Miguel, although I may pick up with the Eagles and, <laughs> and have a story with the Eagles. Uh, uh-huh. But I did develop a character, and I have future books, and and uh-huh. so I will have a a a character for a book that is a series, but it, it's not uh-huh. a book related book. Ooh, I, I can't wait to to read that book. I, I think it's a great thing because kids love to to know. Okay, so will the character, you know, be in another series? Will the character in, encounter more obstacles? And I, I think the book does help them understand that. So I, I was just curious about that. Kids love to identify with certain characters in books. So I think it's it's a good thing. Awesome. So here it comes to a very exciting part. And I don't want to give away anything to the listeners because I know you want to share about this. So what pages would you like to share with listeners and readers today? Sure. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit toward the beginning of the book uh, and then um, and then a little bit toward the end of the book. And so uh, uh, the book is primarily in English, although there's a few Spanish words and, and Spanish concepts mixed in there. Um, a lot of people have asked me if I'm going to write, uh, release a Spanish version, and I am, and I'm kind of working on that. And so I, I'm going to read a little bit of that uh, uh, as, as one of the passages, not right now, but I, I'll, I'll let everyone know when I do that. Uh, so I'm going to read a couple pages in English, and then I'll read one page in Spanish. So uh, on page four, this is where Miguel goes and he tells his best friend, his best friend is Francisco, and he tells him that he wants to go to Eagle School. So uh, it it begins like this on page four. Uh, Miguel told Francisco, I want to go to Eagle School. But when Francisco heard that Miguel wanted to go to Eagle School, he was not happy or excited like Miguel thought he would be. Why do you want to go to Eagle School, asked Francisco. Do you think you're better than the rest of us ducks? On page five, it made Miguel awfully sad that Francisco did not understand. To make things worse, Francisco went and told all the other ducks that Miguel did not like being a duck and wanted to be an eagle. Miguel tried to tell them that he did like being a duck, but they did not want to listen and just could not see that sometimes it's okay to be different. And so this this, uh, theme is kind of picked up a little bit further. And uh, on page 23, this is... uh, I'm going to read this in Spanish because this is where I'm working on my translation. So this part is in Spanish. It's in English in the regular book, but I'm going to try, I'm going to translate. This is, the reader, the listeners are hearing something new. (laughs) It's not even out yet. So this is the Spanish. Todos los días que Miguel iba a la escuela de Águilas, aprendía todo 
lo que se les enseña a las águilas, pero también aprendía otras cosas. Aprendió que algunos amigos se sentían feliz porque él iba a la escuela de águilas y otros amigos se, sentía, se sentían por ese mismo motivo enojados. Aprendió que algunas águilas eran bien con y otros estaban muy, muy enojados. Miguel aprendió que algunos patos y águilas tenían buen corazón y otros patos y águilas tenían un corazón de piedra, aunque él no entendía el por qué. Pero sobre todas las cosas, aprendió que está bien ser diferente. So that is page 23. Uh, again, I'm in the process of translating the whole book, and I'm doing some tweaks in there. Uh, but that's kind of the pages of the book. And so I would definitely love for people to read and pick up the book. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really love that that second part there in Spanish. I think listeners are really going to enjoy that. So they have the book with them. Um, they can actually go through page 23 and uh, go through the same sections that you did in Spanish and in English. And I think that's the best part of dual language reading. Um, of course, that's what I'm passionate about. I think that's what brings both the best worlds. And I, I really love it. So I can't wait for you to share your Spanish version. Is your Spanish version going to be like that English and Spanish or old Spanish? What do you think? I think it'll be all Spanish. Uh, huh? Again, yes, I think it'll be all Spanish. And, and uh, you know, I, I asked for some help translating the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they translated it, they tried to translate the Spanish parts into English and the English mm -hmm. parts into Spanish, and it didn't flow the same. It, mm, it, it took away right. from the story. And so I, I think that's one of the things that listeners who read Spanish or are learning mm -hmm. Spanish need to understand is that there's there's some um, there there's there's some sentiments that don't translate exactly word for word. And so how do you translate sentiments from English to Spanish without um, so, so it's not just translating word for word, it's feeling by feeling, if that makes any sense. That's no, I completely understand because, uh, you know, the, many of the stories that uh, I create and design and, and translate as Spanish for kiddos, you know, it, I take the culture into consideration in English and in Spanish because we want to keep the same meaning and we want to keep the same meaning as far as I call it cultural translation. Because yeah. you don't want to lose that meaning in English and you don't want to lose that meaning in Spanish. And Absolutely. that's the beauty uh, of being bilingual, you know, being, uh, you know, Spanish speaking. And but you also do know English and you know the English culture. So I, I believe students should embrace that, you know, with open arms because you are special in that way. And that's my message and my mission with Spanish for Kids. Of course, I love your book. I really do. Um so how do you think, uh, so how can listeners learn more about your book? Sure. Uh, so I have created, um, uh, again, I, I, I have other books kind of in the works. And so because of that, I created my own publishing company and I have my own website and I maintain that on my own. So if people are just looking for more information on the book, they can go to www.miguelgoestoeagleschool.com. So just run the whole title of the book together. Uh, and you don't have to do any uppercase. It's www.miguelgoestoeagleschool.com. Uh, and then if you, that will lead you to actually my publishing website, which is Dancing Duck Publishing. Um, and, and so that's just www.dancingduckpublishing.com. But I have some free resources on there. So there's some word searches and there's some uh, coloring pages. And so there, there's one... Uh, um, a coloring page in particular of Miguel looking toward the sky. And so the idea is that the students can kind of download it and color it. But again, I want parents involved. I, I want, because it's where Miguel is dreaming of going to Eagle school. Uh, and so it'd be, not, I think parents should not just let their kids color it, but, but say, what do you dream of being? Uh, mm -hmm. What is it? What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? And then Great. by the same token, what, what are some of the things that, that, uh, may make you afraid that you can't mm. get to those goals, right? 
Because right. again, the whole point of the book is is for parents to have conversations with students, for, right. for students and kids to understand, uh, you know, that that they're not uh, they're not unique in their feelings of of discomfort or confusion, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, you you know, parents need to talk to their kids about that, especially now more than ever. I, I think yeah, that needs absolutely. to happen. So I, I do hope that parents will go to the website. Again, uh, it's just miguelgoestoeagleschool.com and download some of the, the resources that are there for them. Oh, awesome. And of course, I will include all this in our show notes so that parents know how to get in touch with you and learn more about Miguel uh, Goes to Eagle School and understand, you know, how can they can they do that more more effectively, you know, I think read alouds is what actually brings, you know, that that connection between parents. And I think it's a great book that you can, you know, just sit down and then read together and, and just talk, open the discussion. I think it's it's a great way to do that. I love that. Thank, Thank you, you so much for, for sharing your book today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Did you enjoy that interview with Isai Gutierrez and Miguel Goes to Eagle School? I especially enjoy the Spanish reading, of course, and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. But I guess it just shows you as well that uh, even bilingual students and bilingual learners can overcome many different things when we work hard and we persevere in many other things, especially when we're learning another language and especially when we're in a different culture as well. So I hope you enjoyed this and many other stories. You can find more fun stories and more ideas at our Spanish for Kiddos blog, Spanish for Kiddos blog. And also please check out other fun strategies that you can also add to your lessons or to your classes. Join me next time as I read another fun bilingual story in English and Spanish. Thank you so much for joining me today and hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye everyone. Mm-hmm.